Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Thursday, first day of June, June 1st, 2023. Goodness. Uh, it is about 12.54 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. Latest quake shows some movement here into the uh, Middle America Trench with a 4.0 coming in just off the coast here uh, along the Middle America Trench just off Mexico uh, within this area. USGS not picking up on it yet, but uh, again, that's just coming in to the um, earthquake 3d globe also some movement up here into colorado where we've seen a 3.4 uh, just about an hour ago now one minute to the hour just north of trinidad 3.4 uh, now i know this area has seen some uh, earthquake activity in the recent past there is quite a few um let's see here i know there was within the vicinity of of this area some oil pumping operations but specifically across this region where the 3.4 struck looks to be uh, here around the mountain range hard to say though if there's uh, maybe some older operations out here a lot of times the uh, vegetation and just the general uh, erosion and whatnot from the uh, weather tends to uh, erase the tracks of the past so to speak uh, either way 3.4 eight kilometers here below the surface just north of trinidad colorado Let's see what else we have here. Looks like Yellowstone showing some activity overnight as well. Uh, 2.1. That was actually this morning, it looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Yellowstone here real quick. Stand by for just a second as I pull up the overview. Um, okay, there's that 2.1. Just seen it coming in here. It looks like around the Maple Creek area, maybe the Holmes Hill region. You can see this earthquake um, right here. 2.1, it looks like nothing big it did show up here on a couple other seismograph stations in the yellowstone area of wyoming uh, but that looks like that's about it doesn't look like there's any major activity uh, there today so far uh, northern california still seeing some movement up here at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone now this is the area that has seen some uh, trimmer activity over the past eight nine days or so let me show you guys the trimmer map here stand by as i pull this up uh, this was yesterday's event here, 307 epicenters of trimmer. This is a, kind of an ongoing sequence here over the past week. 10 days actually started um, started about 10 days or so ago. Um, let me show you guys the, the total tally here. Uh, minus a few days, over 3,000 uh, epicenters of trimmer. Not for sure where that just went to. <laughs> Stand by for a second. That was weird. Some a ghost in the machine again. So over the past week, once again here, uh, most of the trimmer activity, hopefully it doesn't do that again. That's kind of odd. I'm just kind of count that out as uh, just a, an odd deal. Uh, yeah, so southern end of the Cascadia shown uh, some quite the uptick here in trimmer. Not so much up north. Most of the activity has been down south. And of course, the trimmer activity underneath this land, underneath this uh, uh, region, about 45 kilometers at its deepest, sometimes a little bit uh, deeper. Of course, the subduction zone goes further down than the trimmer. This is just where the uh, trimmer activity tends to occur. Uh, and then, of course, the strain and stress builds upstream closer to the subduction level itself, which is um, right here, northward. You got about Northern California all the way up past the Vancouver Island ranges, and it ends here around the Queen Charlotte Sound. That's the entire length of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, trimmer activity will add some strain up here, upstream and in other areas um, around the subduction zone. And we've been seeing that here uh, with some twos and even a 3.9 yesterday here onto the uh, plate boundary of the North Amer or the uh, Pacific and the Gorda plate, which sits up north. Triple point junction here. Um, so just kind of watching this. Uh, the earthquake activity this morning looks like it's about 18 kilometers deep uh, into the southern end here of the Cascadia mega thrust. I know it's a big word, mega thrust, right? Well, it definitely is. It's a it's a plate boundary here, subduction zone that's very capable of producing uh, a 9.0 or greater earthquake, and it's been 323 years built up strain uh, since the last big one. So just another day closer here to uh, seeing that big one happen out here. When will it happen? Well, your guess is as good as mine, but I tend to believe that it's going to happen when we see elevated 
trimmer events. That, I believe, firmly when uh, the big one will pop here along the Cascadia when we're having one of these events. So we'll continue to watch this, see how... Um, well, let's go back here to the month now. Kind of curious. This will include about when it started here. It looks like late on the day on Monday. The previous days there in, uh, in uh, May were fairly much non-existent. We had maybe 50 here, 90 here. Uh, but the big event that we're still kind of in uh, kicked up here on the 22nd time frame. I just want to see how many trimmers we have here. Oh, yeah, almost almost 5,000 epicenters of trimmer. And again, the majority of that uh, within the past 10 days or so. Right there, southern end of the Cascadia into northern California. You can see that's about as far down as it goes here into the Sacramento Valley. It doesn't really go too much further because the subduction level uh, is not underneath this area. Um, the plate system here kind of goes down a little bit slightly like that. And of course, well inland, not down here. There's no subduction zone. This is a different type of plate boundary. As you can see here on the map, it transforms from the Cascadia, the subduction zone, to the Mendocino Triple Point Junction, with which is a combination here of the uh, Cascadia up north here. But in all, all in all, this is going to be the North American plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, or the Gorda plate over here, and then the Pacific plate to the south. So this is just the Triple Point Junction area. Uh, and then from there, it kind of transforms down into the San Andreas Fault, which is a plate boundary, of course, runs through uh, the western half here of California, all the way down to the Salton Sea. All right, continue to watch that, see how that plays out. Rest of Northern California, fairly quiet. Uh, the Bay Area looks quiet as well. Down into the central portion of the state, some very small microquake activity. Uh, let's pull up the 2.5 and above. Looks like, aside from the movement up north there into the uh, Cascadia, things uh, somewhat quiet. These earthquakes here from yesterday, as far as the 2.5 and above goes, so mostly microquakes here across the southern portion of the state. No major swarms that I can see here across the area, just very typical here across the plate boundary uh, there in Southern California. All right, movement, uh, again, there's that earthquake in uh, Trinidad, Colorado. Oklahoma appears to be a little bit elevated today uh, with some seismicity activity taking place across the beautiful state of Oklahoma. I'm sure much needed rainfall has been uh, occurring out there, but of course they can always use some more. Mostly microquakes here across the area uh, today. Nothing above the 2.0 threshold. Rest of the country fairly quiet uh, down here along the Middle America Trench. Of course, we do have some activity kicking up here with a 4.0. And uh, the rest of the Caribbean plate over here, uh, including Puerto Rico, looks to be, yeah, looks about the same as yesterday. A little bit quieter. Uh, we did have that 4.0 coming in early last night. Uh, aside from that, mostly twos and some uh, smaller microquakes across the Puerto Rico area. Down into the South America region, you, you would think that uh, there's nothing going on. Well, there's some smaller earthquake activity going on, but... Uh, that's about it. Some twos and threes taking place there across the center portion of the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, most of that just offshore. All right, Big Island of Hawaii has been popping like crazy here as far as earthquake activity around the Kilauea volcano. Look at that. Quite a bit of movement here in the last 24 hours, and I'm sure there's more than what's being stated here on the map. By the way, um, when you are watching the live seismograph stations here on the live stream, um, I added a very close station there to the Kilauea Volcano area, and that's going to be called Cone Peak. Cone Peak. A lot of folks be like, well, where's that at? Could it be Cone Peak, California? Cone Peak, Alaska? Uh, this is going to be Cone Peak, Hawaii. Very close to the Kilauea Volcano. And, of course, the activity that's been coming in has been showing up here pretty nicely across the seismograph station. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, so far, 23 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Um, but I think there's more. I definitely think there's more than that. Um, USGS seems as though they're putting a small amount uh, of activity there on the earthquake catalog that gets put out to the public compared to the actual seismograph activity that I'm going to check right now. Uh, let's see if I can bring this up. That one's not working. This page right here, usgs.gov slash volcanoes slash Kilauea 
is a really cool site to check out when they're working. Uh, tilt meters, gas stations, GPS measurements, um, seismograph stations there, webby quarters, all that good stuff, even webcams. Uh, this is all available to the public. It is, uh, of course, um, by the USGS. And let's see what this seismograph station here has. Past 12 hours. Past 24 hours, so past 12 hours here around the Kilauea Volcano area still shows some elevated seismicity and more so within the last few hours it looks like. Things are starting to get a little bit more cluttered, a little bit more active and larger in terms of the magnitudes that are taking place here across that volcano. I still think uh, we're very close to uh, seeing this return to the eruptive status. Let me check out the tilt meter uh, real quick. Tilt meter shows inflationary tilt. Uh, this goes back a few days here, actually almost the past month. As you can see, it's been on a steady incline or a climbing, so to speak, inflationary tilt uh, since about the 1st of May. Been steady as she goes there on the uh, inflationary department on that tilt meter. So continue to watch that. Uh, latest informational statement here put out by the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory that was put out today it looks like June 1st uh, currently not erupting Kilauea Summit is currently exhibiting signs of heightened unrest and it's been that way for a little while uh, summit seismicity remains elevated uh, no unusual activity across the rift zones there though uh, inflationary tilt inflationary uh, and elevated seismicity continue at Kilauea Summit daily rates of course have been variable kind of up and down but over the past several months, both deformation and seismicity have been elevated beyond observations preceding the January 5th, 2023 summit eruption. So that was the last time. Um, that was the last eruption there. Let's see. Definitely continue to watch this. I, I still think we're going to be seeing this kick up really soon. Just with... The inflationary tilt, the earthquake swarms, uh, the last 30 days of earthquake activity, and let me show you guys this here real quick, uh, is quite phenomenal. Uh, 481 earthquakes there at the Kilauea volcano. That's a lot. So things are brewing underneath, getting ready, I think. All right, we'll continue to watch that and report back as necessary up into the Alaska region. It's a movement across the area today. Nothing major going on there. Nothing big across the Western Pacific. And in fact, this looks awfully quiet here. Um, let me see what we got. Big time quiet. Look at that. Not a whole lot of activity here across the Western Pacific. And that's rather odd. Uh, 4.6 coming into the New Guinea area, it looks like. Uh, the latest quake on the globe. Did see some activity around the Solomon Islands here, northwest of the Solomon Islands, around the Solomon Sea. A little swarm of activity yesterday and again this morning. Mostly fours, upper fours, and uh, that 5.3 that came in yesterday. Looks like things are uh, getting fairly active here in this region. Of course, we've had a lot of large earthquake activity across this area of the plate. Remember, we had uh, some sevens back here. Um... A whole bunch of activity here as well, including some sevens. So this area looks as though uh, kind of taking place in the quiet zone currently. Uh, so that may be filling in a little bit of the gap. We've got to watch for regions that really haven't shown any seismic activity uh, and that are posed for uh, some large earthquakes. Big time up here around the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. And the uh, Mariana Trench, Izu Trench area has been awfully quiet as well. We've seen a little bit of activity, but uh, strain up there has got to be fairly large. Quiet again today. Uh, further movement across the uh, area west of New Guinea. Mostly, uh, see what we got there for earthquake activity around the Banda Sea. A couple smaller quakes there. Uh, and that's shown up here on the USGS map as well. The Java Trench, mostly three. Some of that activity from early this morning. Areas around the uh, Andaman Sea northward, northern end of the Java Trench over here, it is awfully quiet currently. Some, uh, looks like some deeper activity returning to the Afghanistan area. Uh, and also Turkey area, seeing some twos. Continued aftershock activity from the large earthquakes earlier this year. Uh, a little bit of movement across the areas of 
the Mediterranean, and also off the coast here of Morocco, it looks like, in between that strait. The Atlantic Ocean, though, quiet. Again, awfully quiet. All right, uh, space weather activity. Let's see what we have going on here for the solar weather events. Well, we did see some movement yesterday, some large M flare, long duration M flare activity. That was coming off of a uh, sunspot region, which should be a little bit more visible today. 3323. That's from, looks like last night. We can see the most recent image here. There we go. Got a little bit better perspective of it. That does look fairly complex. A lot of different. Uh, this whole area here is very complex and dynamically structured with the magnetic fields uh, and that will pose a further threat for some large flaring. Uh, a, couple of the, a couple of these other sunspots look like they're trying to gain some steam as well, but they are drifting off towards the southwestern limb of the sun. I think the main area to watch is going to be this one here. Again, that's going to be 3323, looking fairly uh, promising uh, here in the days ahead, hopefully. A UV filter ray look at it uh, does show some brightness to it. Currently flaring slightly, it looks like, with some sea flare activity on the chart here. You can see uh, a little bit of sea flare activity kicking up. Nothing big. Uh, but again, these things can pop up out of the blue uh, really quick with the next flare if they're dynamically set up. No major uh, coronal holes facing us, I don't think. A couple smaller ones not positioned properly there for a full effect but uh, looks like maybe around the second tomorrow let's see what we got here so june 2nd utc time could see a little bit of elevated storming conditions here this is of course has to do with the uh kp index and that could provide some aurora application app amplifications at the higher latitudes again around the utc time of 18 to 24 uh which is going to be um um, tomorrow about this time or so not not the, not the best timing uh, when it comes to uh, being able to see the auroras but we'll continue to watch that all right let's see here I think that's about it for space weather let's check out the weather forecast here for today got a slight risk here of some severe weather across portions of western Texas here Looks like Abilene westward with a 5% tornado possibility near Brownfield. Been through there uh, a couple times. Or, yeah, I don't know. It's Brownwood, Brownfield. I think it was Brownwood where I was uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, but, yeah, 5% chance for tornado possibility there around Brownfield, Texas, extending into portions here of New Mexico. Most of the threat today looks to be uh, some large hail with the hatched area around brownfield texas again looks like maybe uh yeah some definitely some good size hail Alrighty, uh we're gonna jump off here folks have a good day stay safe out there and again i'll uh, keep a big eye on the big island keep an eye on the big island <laughs> not big eye keep an eye on the uh, big island here around the kilauea volcano we do have that live seismograph station there at Cone Peak, Hawaii. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Have a good one. Enjoy your Thursday. Take care, folks.